Hello everyone, let's discuss how functional safety deals with risk. Basically, failure originates from defect that can be considered the root cause. For instance, moisture can lead to corrosion in hardware components, triggering various failure modes. These failure modes have the potential to disrupt any system function and even cause the entire products, such as a car, to malfunction. The failure of hardware device poses a threat to human safety, and software units can also contribute to such failure if they have defects. Therefore, it's crucial to provide adequate solution in line with the Allah principle as low as reasonably practicable. And remaining risks should be acceptable at a reasonable level. On the left, you can consider the function-oriented analysis depicted or uh, why the method of analyzing the design specification on the right is also worth considering. Both approaches must be carefully considered and implemented throughout the development process. The implementation of functional safety across industry follows a similar pattern. In essence, the risk classification rating is agile for automobiles, DAL for civil aircraft, and SEAL for general industry. While the terminology may vary slightly, the underlying activity remains consistent. We will dive deeper into this aspect in the subsequent section for more detailed explanation. The activities within the functional safety lifecycle are categorized into four main categories. Firstly, we assess the potential hazards uh, associated with the product we are developing and the resulting risk. What is the function of our product? What effect does this function have if it were function? What is the level of risk considering the frequency of occurrence? This process involves finding answer to this question. The next stage involves establishing safety requirement. Based on our understanding of the risk identified in the previous stage, we determine the high and low risk involved. Uh, if the risk level exceeds our target, we define safety requirement to mitigate and reduce the risk. Following this, uh, we proceed to design uh, an architecture that incorporates the safety requirement. All safety requirements must be adequately addressed in the architecture design without any omission. Lastly, safety analysis is performed either during the architecture design process or other lifecycle activity. And safety requirement may be added to this process because of safety analysis. Uh, these four step risk assessment, safety requirement, and architecture design, and safety analysis are repeated iteratively to continually reduce the risk associated with the product. In the functional safety analysis, we utilize two prominent methods, FMEA and FTA, which are representative functional safety methods. FMEA involves analyzing the failure mode effects and causes of the target system, working bottom-up, and it helps us understand what causes malfunction in vehicle, for example. On the other hand, FTA follows top-down approach, where 
we investigate what causes the occurrence of failure based on the results of analyzing the vehicle malfunction. These two methods complement each other. For instance, once we have an architecture consisting of subcomponents, we can conduct an FMEA analysis on it. Uh, similarly, FTA can be performed, leading to the derivation of new safety requirements and subsequent modification to the architecture. FTA, FMEA, and safety design can be constructed complementarily. Thus far, we have covered the key activities necessary for functional safety. However, uh, there are a few additional activities worth considering. All resources utilized in the project must be safe and reliable. While safety design is crucial, managing the resources allocated to the project is equally important. Supplier on the goal of functional safety audit to ensure their qualification. It may also be necessary to verify the tools, software components, and hardware device employed in the project. Moreover, every project requires effective management, and functional safety projects are no exception. Safety management is crucial to proactively control risk based on organization rules and policy. And lastly, there are certain yet important activities such as configuration management and problem management. These activities, uh, though their specific term may vary depending on the standard, uh, but play a vital role in maintaining the integrity of work products and effectively managing any problem that may arise throughout the project.